tym całym nieszczęsnym ugorowaniem na czele. Nie może być tak, że my tutaj w Wielkopolsce mamy najdroższą ziemię w całym kraju. Wielu rolników inwestowało ogromne pieniądze, licząc na to, że, te, że ta ziemia pozwoli rozwijać ich gospodarstwa. A dzisiaj unijni urzędnicy przychodzą i mówią, nie, wy nie będziecie na tej ziemi uprawiać. What's up everybody, this is Mike. Today we're going to be walking alongside with the Polish protesters here, the Polish farmers specifically, uh, who are very upset with the European Union right now. The European Union member states such as Spain, Germany, Holland, uh, right now here in Poland, a lot of these countries are very upset about the stringent laws and rules being handed down to these farmers. And a lot of farmers believe ultimately this might lead to the demise of the small farms. I think larger production farms might be able to withstand and sustain this type of uh, implementation of fees. But right now, when I talk to a lot of farmer clients of mine, a lot of them are really upset because they feel like the fertilizer is too much, um, the diesel, the gas is too expensive, and they also are on the hook for huge monthly payments to repay the leases for this uh, machinery and equipment they rent when they have to uh, develop and cultivate their fields. So I actually stand alongside with the farmers because they feed us, they produce the goods we need uh, to, that produce our clothes. Uh, if you want a good hamburger, a great piece of chicken, a turkey, ham, whatever, these guys produce it and they are the actual food source and the lifeblood of this country. And I don't really understand why the Polish parliament would like to hand down such strict regulations when it applies to these particular people in the name of climate change and 2030 agendas. It's really weird, it's really sick. Uh, we're in a really odd time right now in history. So we're gonna join these farmers right now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you at the end.
to tak będą wyglądać nasze gospodarstwa. Symboliczna trumna polskiego rolnictwa. Ale jak znam wolę walki i serce, zaangażowanie, przywiązanie i miłość do swojej ziemi, to na pewno na to nie pozwolimy. Na pewno nie zgodzimy się, aby nasze problemy były załatwione w tak laicki sposób. Ja nie wiem, czy zgromadzeni wiedzą, że szykuje się nam w 25 roku, czyli, czyli już za rok, tak zwany dobrostan, wprowadzenie dobrostanu. Z czym się wiąże te dobrodziejstwo?
So that's it for this video. What did you think about uh, what the situation is here in Poland? I'm doing my best. This is basically politics for dummies. I'm trying to explain it to you in layman's terms. Basically, we have three main important points here. There's a huge influx of Ukrainian grain. Even though it's under 10%, it's enough to kind of throw off the Polish market. Poland as a country also produces its own grain and they feel in general, if you have this Ukrainian grain, even though it's just used as a hub, the country Poland, to be able to transport this grain through other European Union countries, Polish people are basically upset, and not necessarily the people, but the farmers as a whole. Polish farmers are really upset because they have to abide by these really stringent and strict rules that the EU has handed down to them in terms of pesticides, certain fertilizers that have been banned for over 20 years that are not allowable, under the EU statute, but somehow uh, the EU is allowing this Ukrainian grain to be uh, imported here without any oversight. Donald Tusk, who is acting right now in the present as the prime minister here in Poland, he's actually trying to walk the tightrope in terms of satisfying Zelensky's needs. I know Zelensky's basically saying Poland is starting to lose a lot of solidarity uh, when it pertains to uh, the relationship between the two countries and i think poland right now is at this crossroads where either they have to question their own economic uh health and well-being and what it looks like in the future or really try to maintain these relationships which are really horrible times right now for the ukrainian people there's unfortunately a huge amount of fatigue i will tell you this also by talking to a lot of people i know here in poland there's collectively uh, a lot of fatigue when it pertains to the Ukrainian people. And it's not because of what you might think. Polish people are uh, hugely sympathetic and empathetic to the needs of Ukrainian people. But within addition to this fatigue that I'm talking about, Ukrainian families are receiving 500 plus benefits. A lot of these people are still receiving government benefits. A lot of Polish people feel these aren't very fiscally sound policies. And without no end in sight when it pertains to this war, Polish people are actually uh, battle fatigued. Even though they aren't on the front lines, Ukrainian men and women and children have lost their lives by the tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Right now, I'm concerned what it might look like here in Poland and looking to the future, how this might impact the future and the local economy. Hope you enjoyed the commentary. Hope I was able to explain this in some detail that you would actually understand if you care about uh, what's happening abroad. Until the next one, just.